Okay, so let's go through the settings menu. Hit A, go into settings, you'll be greeted by a number of options. We're going to go through several of them right now. First one showing there is system info, hit A, and it will load a little screen up and let us know exactly what is going on, what build version we have, what player number we are, if we have Wi-Fi or Ethernet connected, and if our connection to the Internet is active. More about that later. If we go to Gamepad Tester, this is a great feature. Got built right in. If you have any trouble with your wheel or encoder board, we can open this up and we go right online to Gamepad Tester and you can hit a button and we can look at all our buttons. So A, B, X, Y, left bumper, right bumper, if you have the top deck. And those are very valuable buttons to use in some of the PC games especially. We got our coin, we got our start, our shifter will be up and down, our wheel will be right and left. And very important, your brake and your gas pedal need to be the triggers. If it's showing as your right stick, so your right trigger, you need to change the pedal mode. There are instructions on how to do that. Make sure that you do that because the old gaming box used right stick, but now we need to use right trigger. Exit same way as you do every game, coin and start, and we go right back to the menu. Here's another cool feature, the games list. So this will take us straight to our internet games list page. And when this loads up, you will see all the games and any changes that we've recently made. And you can scroll up and down with the shifter. You can also use the A and B buttons to tab down more quickly if you want to get down there faster. As well as the X button will bring us to the other tabs. Pretty cool. So it's completely usable without needing a keyboard. You can find the game and find the controls that we've set for it. Again, coin and start, exits out of there. I'm going to skip by a couple here. Retro shooter calibration we added just to quickly load up the application to calibrate your retro shooters. And you'll, in this case, be plugging in a gun and going through that calibration. Again, coin start, exits that. The router config option we'll go into way more when we get into networking. It brings up the config page for the router, which you may have to do some configuration on. Team Viewer is just in case we ever need to remote into your PC if we're having issues that we can't solve any other way. And update system, we're going to get into more in our system update video. We went through all of these while we're connected to the internet. What happens if we are not connected to the internet? Okay, we've unplugged the ethernet cable. That's the easiest way to get on and off the network is to use the Ethernet in the back of the PC. If you have to use Wi-Fi, we're going to show you how to do that in just a few minutes. So if we go back into System Info, now that we've disconnected the Internet, then we will discover a few differences. Obviously, we're still the same build, same player. We know have no IP address, and it knows the Internet connection is no longer active. So, Gamepad Tester is normally an online application. What is going to happen now that we have no internet connection? Well, we have a standalone app that loads instead, and this works pretty well with one caveat. So, obviously, you can test all your keys the same way. The steering does not really show up and the pedals will sh still show as right trigger and left trigger so virtually all the keys can be tested however it doesn't show analog unless you plug in a mouse 
and click ultra precision testing. Now your pedals, you can see exactly how hard you're pushing them and your steering wheel will also show. So unfortunately you do need a mouse to make that toggle if you're not connected to the internet. If anyone knows a standalone application that boots straight into the screen and doesn't require any mouse or keyboard input, uh, we'd gladly switch that out. We have not found one. Again, start and coin to exit. The games list is also an online app, Google Sheet. So what happens when we log into that without an internet connection? Well, it comes up and warns you that you're looking at a cached version, not the newest version. But it still gives you lots of information and can still be used. Again, start deploying, exit. So one other thing I want to show is the networking menu toggle. And all that does is if you if we go back with the B button, you'll notice there is a networking menu item here with about 100 games in it that can be network played. However, if you don't have two machines or more, uh, you do not want to load these games up. They're all set up as single player games in the racing category and the other categories. If you load them from the networking category, you may freeze the computer on some of them because they're going to wait until you have player two set up. So to limit that possibility, you can simply turn that networking menu toggle off. It's just a simple toggle. So right now we are going to turn it off. And if you ever want to turn it back on, you do the same thing. So that is turned on by default. Uh, but you may want to turn it off. It'll reboot. And now you'll notice racing multiplayer, there is no networking anymore. So now I want to show you the config menu toggle. It works similar to the networking menu toggle, except it does require a full reboot. We're going to turn on the hidden config menu. We highly recommend that you keep this off at all times, except when you actually need to use it. So after the machine reboots, you will see a new menu highlighted in red so that you know you don't normally want this on. And we can go into this menu. Here we have a number of different menu items. We have a Steam toggle, which turns the Steam menu on and off. We'll do a whole separate video on using Steam with this system. It's a, it's a great feature. We have a network configure. We have a Pixelcade toggle. So if you have a Pixelcade hooked up, you should just be able to plug it in USB into the PC and turn it on. So by default, that is turned off. If you want to turn it on, you simply go into the config menu and toggle it on. Because we have limited access to Windows with our system, uh, we give you sound config panel access here. This will bring up the Windows control panel. You'll probably need to plug in a mouse and a keyboard to make use of this. If you need to toggle between HDMI and audio jack devices, for instance, that is a place that you can do that. Check volume, do other testing, things like that. You can hit start and point again to exit that app. Display panel, same idea. Things up screen for resolution, rotation, and anything else that you might need to change. A couple other options we have here. We have force update, which ties into doing a system update. We're going to have a whole separate video on that. The factory restore, if things are really go awry, you can do a factory restore and hopefully that will fix it. And then we have the option to convert between player one and player two 
cabs, which has to do with networking. The cabs together in our router, and there'll be whole separate videos about that as well. So to set up your Wi-Fi, we're simply going to go into Network Config, and you will need a mouse and a keyboard plugged in temporarily to do this. And we are going to connect, go find our Wi-Fi to connect to. You're going to want to click on Connect Automatically so that it remembers every time it boots up to connect to your Wi-Fi. So if you hit Escape here on your keyboard, we'll notice something, and that is that we do not have focus back to big box. So the controls do not work, can't do anything. This is a case that occasionally will happen because of Windows and Big Box, some kind of bug. And our solution for now at least is a special key combination, and that is A, B, and coin. So if you just click A, B, and coin one time quick, then focus will be restored back to Big Box. So if you ever find your menus getting frozen, try A, B, and coin, and that should fix it for you. So if we go back out of here, back to settings, if you wanted to double check system info, we now have a Wi-Fi IP address. Nothing on Ethernet and our internet connection is active. So there you go. We're going to now turn the config menu toggle back off so that we don't accidentally make any improper changes. And after that reboots, you'll be back in business with a Wi-Fi connection, and you've learned what the various items in the settings menu 